Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, recently on a um, sort of weekly wrap up, I mentioned this book and I did say that I wanted to do a separate review of that. And that is for a very good reason. And the book, All Down Darkness Wide by Sean Hewitt, I think I can fairly easily say is one of the most incredible books I've read this year, if not ever. Um, I This was the easiest five stars to give. I was just sort of like, even about 20 pages in, I was like, yeah, this is going to be five stars, even if everything else from here on out is rubbish. <laughs> like, the first 20 pages of this, the first 50 especially, were just so spectacular that I had, you know, I, I just, I couldn't see it kind of going any other way. So, context, background. Uh, this is um, a memoir. Um, from Sean Hewitt, who has sort of pu previously published poetry. Um, in this review, I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that would be sort of spoilers. Memoirs are a bit different, I guess, with spoilers in some ways, but, um, and he's kind of fairly open right from the beginning about most of what's going to happen. Um, but I I'll still sort of let you know when sort of proper sort of spoilery things come. But most of the rest of this you could um, find from either very early on in the book or from the blurb itself. So um, hopefully it wouldn't kind of fall too, too much into a spoiler bit there. Um, but with that in mind, let's get going. So this book, like I mentioned, I just found really stunning for how beautiful it was. Um, it is a memoir that largely talks about Sean Hewitt working out his own sexuality and reconciling that, but also his first early relationships that kind of introduced him to who he was, to what he likes, to um, who he is as, in terms of his identity, and various other things. And apart from just having a gorgeous, gorgeous cover, um, I just was completely bowled away by this. It made me just so deeply emotional. Um, I read the, I, I basically kept on n taking longer and longer to read it because I wanted to read it only when I was in the right frame of mind to really soak it all up. I didn't want to feel like I was rushing anything. I didn't want to feel like I was only half-heartedly reading it. I wanted to give it my full attention every time. And so I read the first 50 pages on a train and I still had like an hour left of that commute. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something else for a little bit because this is so gorgeous that I just need to sample it in little, little bits here and there. And this memoir just, it goes into some really dark places. Um, it talks a lot about mental health, particularly mental distress um, and sort of characters who are, you know, wanting to either take their life or to not really continue living in some capacity, you know, whether that's sort of shutting other things down or whether it's it's kind of looking at something else. It's not an easy read, as you maybe guess from that, but I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever read. So, starting off, Sean Hewitt guides us in the most beautiful prose through um, his sort of early days working out a bit of who he is and how particularly kind of going off to university and going to other places sort of acted as a bit of a, an eye-opener for who he was. And in those times, he meets a few important men in his life so a few men who reshape a large part of his his sort of time then and his future um we meet a man really early on who's part of a couple and the three of them sort of all hang out together and often have sex together and what have you but there's something lingering in terms of the relationship between him and this other man of wanting to just know a bit more about him and later on he finds he sort of goes to look up this man and find out more about what happened to him and find some really quite dark and disturbing things. And I think so much of this book is suffused with that sense of loss and grief and not knowing. Um, not only him sort of not knowing about who he is and his own identity, but also never really knowing how things are going to pan out. I mean, obviously none of us ever know that, but there's a real uncertainty to so much of this book. Um, and particularly trying to guess others and trying to understand others. Sean Hewitt is sort of this character almost walking through observing life and observing the world, but also having these really quite profound and intense experiences with people. And um, I listened to a podcast where he was being interviewed um, 
and he spoke about how constructing this book was largely around trying to reconstruct some of those memories. So he had his own diaries that he wrote at the time, which explains so many of the very specific details that he's recalled. But also he did a lot of work going out to friends and family and basically anybody who's going to be mentioned in this book to say, I think I remember this. Is this what actually happened? And often in those conversations, things changed, you know he would realise that there was something he hadn't known at the time that that actually later came to be a much more significant thing. Or things that were kept from him for good or for ill that then kind of formed part of his memory as well. And that I think shows through every every word of this book that there's a real honesty and integrity to it. This isn't him kind of making lyrical his life. This is not a kind of a sort of a way of tying everything up with a pretty bow and saying, well, you know, wasn't this thing difficult in my life, but I'm still great. I'm still shining. This book is so honest and raw and authentic with how it portrays memories and that often we can't remember things the way that we think or often we think everything's fine and five years down the line we realise that it wasn't or vice versa. We think everything was incredibly difficult and actually it was fine. There was just there were just other things looming in the background that we never knew. And that, I think, is why I love this so much. It is just so deeply thoughtful and careful and caring. And so all the way through the book, we are introduced to some people going through some really horrendous things. But at no point does this book feel, feel like it's pitying them or it's putting them down or it's judging them. It's always viewing them through a real sense of cu curiosity and, and warmth of trying to understand these people, trying to understand what's going on in their world, how we might be able to help them, but also sometimes acknowledging that we can't. And I just, I think it's a masterpiece. I really do. And um, I know I've said that maybe a bit recently and it sounds like that maybe that word means nothing anymore. I can't think of how this book could have been done any differently. And it surprised me at every turn with just how generous and beautiful and loving it was. And um, I really commend him for his his power and, and honesty in, in, in writing this. Um, and let's talk a little bit more about the later part of the book. Some of this will be spoiler territory, so please consider yourself warned. Um, but this is a fairly significant part of the book. So at one point, Sean Hewitt, recently having sort of graduated about to kind of well considering a master's um and sort of in a, an odd period of his life meets Linus um a man who he spends a great amount of time with um these two men sort of hit it off kind of purely in this very strange way they sort of meet on a sort of trip um and it it's that again really carefully observed thing of understanding queerness of sort of spotting it in others um of both of them circling around the fact that they're not entirely sure if the other person is gay but needing to find out because they don't want to miss this opportunity to be with each other and this very quickly develops into this deep passionate relationship um sean at one point is in um sweden for a while with him he starts to learn bits of swedish with him they they live together they have this very sort of domestic life but the cracks start to form not only in terms of parts of their relationship, but mostly in terms of Linus's mental health. Linus is really going through it, and Sean finds himself quickly placed into a position of trying to understand and support Linus, whilst Linus is either refusing this help or is just sort of getting worse and worse. And Sean has to try and work out in this book how he is going to look after him. What's the best way to provide support to somebody who is not only resisting that support, but also maybe feels like they're beyond support, where they, at this point, Linus's um, mental health is getting so bad that he is disappearing at times, or he is um, shutting down and all these other things. And so Sean very painfully and honestly writes about what that experience is like. And again, I don't think it does it in a way that is meant... I don't think we're meant to come out of this book thinking Sean is a hero. 
I don't think Sean sees himself as a hero in this. And that's, I think, really well done. That we're not, this is not a book of, hi, I'm Sean, and this is how hard it was looking after somebody going through a mental health crisis. That's not what this book is about. Sean doesn't want a medal. He doesn't want a pat on the back. He wants to just tell the story and look at what's happening and try to understand it for himself. Meanwhile, Linus is getting worse and worse, and um, it starts culminating in some really quite big episodes in this book. And we just sort of live in this world with them. We're a sort of fly on the wall, grasping at every detail, also trying to work it out with him. Um, and ultimately, Sean Hewitt guides us through the last part of that and kind of comes out of the other side. And again, not as a hero, not as this sort of big celebratory thing of having made it, but recognising the sheer difficulty that can come with being human and being a human who cares for other humans and looks after other humans. And in the meantime as well, Sean is incredibly candid about his own struggles and the things he's... The, the demons and ghosts that he's battling from, from former parts of his life. And it all threads together in ways that really tackle so many of the, the key issues that affect so many people, but particularly queer people, around shame, around body image, around a feeling of never quite being right and what that can look like and the, the wider ramifications of that as well. So anyway, I, I, I could talk about this for genuinely hours. I think it's one of the most spectacular things I've ever read. I urge you to, to check it out if it sounds like it might be your thing. Obviously with the caution that it's a hard read. Um, but I think it's a hard read with a lot of rewards, not only in terms of what it has to say, but just in terms of how it says it. Um, Sean Hewitt's uh, poetry collection, Tongues of Fire, is gorgeous. Um, and gives you a good flavour for how brilliantly he's going to be writing in this book. Um, both are stunningly written. I mean, some of the most incredible sentences I've come across where I was just sort of staggered, like, how do you write that sentence? How How is it that sort of years, you know, thousands of years of this language and it changing, how is it that nobody's put words in this order before? And how has nobody ever expressed it this way before? I'm getting a bit emotional thinking about it. It is stunning. I'm going to stop there before I cry. Um, I really hope you enjoy this book if you get a chance to check it out. I've been Bob the Booker, talking about All Down Darkness Why by Sean Hewitt. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.